Welcome to Small Talk. As most of you know by now that I absolutely love volunteering at the Art Gallery because I get to see the work of so many fabulous artists. And if I'm lucky enough, I get to interview them. So today's guest happens to be an artist, ladies and gentlemen, David Evans. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you for inviting me. Oh, it's my pleasure, for sure. Uh, I just want to know, do you have a particular style of art or do you vary from different genres, whatever? Um, well, I started doing uh, photography, uh, which has been my main medium. Um, began that a long time ago in the late 60s, early 70s. Uh, but at the same time, I've always done some drawings and paintings. Uh, I would say the, uh, the medium is um, only part of the question. Uh, Really, the uh, the intent the intention is the same. Um, however, I produce the work. Um, I still do photography and more and more painting now. Oh, that's awesome! Um, and music and video as well. <laughs> music, music and video as well. Yes, I do. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what I find about about artists. They have so many different areas where they where they're good at. You know, they, and and they seem to uh, explore different different tile, uh, tile, style, sorry, different types of art, whether it's be music or, or paintings or whatever it is. Yes, I, I think uh, maybe the reason for that is that uh, I think most artists are very curious people uh, and, and they don't, um, you know, they don't necessarily uh, want to conform with all the uh, expectations and, um, you know, the, the um, uh, the same way of doing things and looking at things all the time. So uh, they ask questions and then come up with answers and the answers lead to more questions, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, I like that. It, you know, one of the things I was thinking about uh, when, when I'm at the art gallery, I, I walk around and I look at all the paintings or, you know, or, or what, they're not all paintings, but the artwork. Mm -hmm. and, and sometimes it's like I can almost feel what that artist was feeling at that time. I'm not sure I might be deluding myself. <laughs> yeah, you never know, but I, I think that's great. I, I think that's a great way to approach art and artists because uh, I, that's what got me in, interested, I think, as an art, as a, as a kid even, you know, I'd see artwork and I'd be somehow overwhelmed by it uh, and, and uh, it, it would surpass my expectations and I'd have a, a really emotional feeling to it, not just what it's supposed to be, but what it means to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I was kind of interested because uh, when your work was displayed, it was uh, with a number of different artists at that time, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, do you want to explain what that was about? Yeah, well, that uh, exhibition was put together uh, by the Reach Gallery uh, in Abbotsford. Uh, and as part of a touring exhibition, and the theme of it was to address issues uh, raised by uh, COVID and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll quickly review the, the theme that was uh, proposed um, by the gallery in their invitation. Uh, artists are encouraged to submit work that is catalyzed by response to or anticipates futures resulting from the current state of global affairs, including but not limited to the COVID-19 pandemic uh, and growing demands for racial justice. So the curators at the, at the time uh, invited artists to um, create works that responded to what was going on and is still going on in the world at large. Yeah, because I was told um, by one of the artists that um, there were only two white people's artwork on display at that point here in mm -hmm. Chilliwack anyway. Right. But, yeah, everybody else was from somewhere else originally. Right, yeah. Uh, so I, I think that was a conscious decision. A, a lot of institutions now are recognizing, and I think that the COVID experiences caused a lot of people to really re-examine re their position in the world globally, not just in their local communities or how they've always felt that things were as they should be. Uh, so, uh, and they're realizing that a lot 
uh, that, that uh, a lot of people were not being represented in, in the institutions, not just art galleries, but everywhere across the board. Right. So uh, indigenous people, uh, people of color, as, as it's called, uh, were under, underrepresented. So they're making an effort to include, and I think that's a wonderful thing. Absolutely. Uh, uh, voices from all over. All yeah. over yes, and as it should be, right? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So did you, you were saying you get an, an invitation? Like, how does an artist get an invitation? Like, how do they know about a particular artist, say? Uh, well, they, uh, this is uh, part of a um, program called the Biennial. Um, that the Reach Gallery instituted, uh, oh, I think it was 19, about 10 years ago or, or, or so. And they put out a call, maybe on Facebook, I'm not sure where I first heard about it, for people to uh, submit works. Uh, and um, so, and then I think what they've done is, what's happened is that they've, uh, they now send out emails to artists that have previously submitted works. Oh, I see. Yeah, that makes sense, of course. Yeah. Now, you said you started off basically with uh, photography. Is that right? Yeah, photography. Uh, but <laughs> a, a particular, I, I was studying communications and I uh, in Montreal. And I came across, or at least two of the teachers there were uh, who I call my mentors. And, and they approached photography as a way of discovering the world, in a sense as an art form rather than as a commercial enterprise. Mm. So, so it wasn't about making portraits or doing advertising mm. photography. It was about going out in the world and discovering, you know, in, in a personal sense, uh, what, what was going on and how, how you react to things. Uh, that's a brief summary, I guess. Right. Well, well, I find it intriguing, you know, because like, um, even like like being a photographer means a lot of different things to a lot of different people, right? Sure. Yeah. Um, like I used to do this show I used to be with three cameras, and I had one a couple of people behind the camera. Yeah. So when I tried to be behind the camera, there was no way I could see what they were seeing. Yes, of course. You know, I just didn't have that that talent or whatever. And I said, I want to be in front of the camera. I don't have that the talent. Be, be behind the camera uh, because I would not notice certain things that as a photographer that you would notice right mm -hmm. whether it's for artwork or for commercial it doesn't matter but there's still a certain a certain way of looking at things or seeing things yes yes absolutely um, and that's I think that's a very individual thing uh, and it's something that uh, I've sort of been exploring uh, my mother was an artist. Uh, she she did she painted portraits primarily, but she also did commercial art. But her and her heart was in in the arts. So I kind of grew up even as a small child watching her paint, and um, I'm sure that influenced me a lot, aroused my curiosity anyway. And as I said, I think most artists are essentially very curious people. <laughs> uh, do you have any artwork to show that you're able to show us? Uh, I should have suggested that before I invited John to actually uh, uh, set up the video. Um, I'm not well situated to do that right now. Well, behind me right here is yes. one of my photographs. Uh, it's a landscape taken in uh, Quebec in a place called Tadoussac. Um, and so that that's one piece that uh, is... Um, you know, oh, there we go, yeah. <laughs> a bit of an angle. Yeah. Um, that's pretty representative, I think, of a lot of the work that I do that, do that is based in landscape um, photography. Um, I very much believe in uh, the importance of the natural world and our relationship to the natural world uh, as, um, as a kind of um, a way of uh, getting ourselves out of our own heads. Mm and appreciating the fact that we are part of and intimately connected with a huge network, which includes not just people, but living, all living things. And uh, so, so that, this in a sense is just my reaction to a foggy day on a river. Um, and the, the, it's, I, I believe in, well, not all, not everything I do is s simple, but I love simplicity. I love, uh, I don't want to overburden the image with a lot of 
busyness and thought. It's a meditative kind of work that I try to do. Oh, I see. Uh, yeah. You mentioned Montreal. Did you grow up there? Yeah, I grew up, grew up in Montreal. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm from Montreal. So I just, you know, it was kind of, kind of. Oh, no kidding. All right. I, was, I grew up on the West Island. Um, so did I. <laughs> I grew up in Ville Saint-Laurent. <laughs> Ville Saint-Laurent, it was a little further west. I was in uh, Valois. In oh, Point. okay. Very, yeah. very good. Now, um, now, now you're out west now, right? Yeah, with a mission. Um, do you, did you bring with you your, that's that influence that growing up from Montreal, did you bring that with you when you moved to the West Coast? Uh, oh, in, in your the, work? Yeah, uh, I, I still go back every, uh, as often as I can, almost every year, go back to Quebec. I, I there's, there's a very, I, I loved in a way growing up there because yeah. of the, the cultural diversity I think it's really important. And I think that's something hmm, uh, I'm, I'm trying to address anyway in my work is, is this sort of like where we can all get together and appreciate what others have to say, not just our own experience and culture. For sure. Uh, are, are you working on anything currently? Uh, I'm working on, uh, well, I've been doing some paintings. Um, I'm sorry, I don't have anything to show you. Uh, That's my, my response, my fault. I apologize. Okay. I should have suggested that. I do have a website if anyone's okay. interested. Yes, please. In, in see that. You can see lots of my work on yeah. there. Yeah. And what's your website? It's davidevansphotography.com. Okay. So I'll make sure that's, uh, put on the, when it, when it's edited, I'll make sure that's put on so people can go and have a look. Um, okay. Yeah. So um, now, now you mentioned your mother did uh, portrait. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that something you have done or would consider doing? I have done so some of that, but um, um, and uh, she did portraits. I think because I, I think she felt a pressure to earn money. Ah. Okay. From her art, uh, and I'm not sure that that's. The, it hasn't always been my, you know, um, my intention in art uh, is, is to earn money because that sort of puts you inside an economic and social system mm -hmm. uh, and with, with very little flexibility. So I know that, for example, she'd be working on a portrait of a child that was being done for a commission by the parents and uh, she would charge $50 or something. I mean, there was more money than it sounds like now back then. But, uh, and then she would become very frustrated. She did beautiful work. Uh, but the parents would say, um, could you change her mouth a little bit? Because, uh, and any, I know she found it frustrating. And uh, uh, I felt like the parents are, or right, the commercial needs were, for another type of vision right. you're supplying. So um, it, it, I, I think she was limited in that way. Mm -hmm. And I think really good art is, is less limited. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's complicated. It's a complicated world to live in, but. Yeah, I can only imagine, you know, I don't do art, so, but I can only imagine what it would be like um, if you doing something for uh, uh, a customer. Right. right? Yeah. Right. It changes everything for you. Yeah. I mean, there's always an aspect. I mean, you, you right now you're doing a, a talk show. So in a, in a way, that's a form of art. And um, so you have people's expectations that you have to meet uh, and you have your own expectations. Yes. Nothing is simple and nothing is uh, you can't step outside the world entirely. And I'm, I'm the same way. But uh, for me, really, for it really to uh work for me i it, it's important that i prioritize a kind of an overall vision which i i'm continually working on i'm trying to expand and um, you know um, make it more real in my life and hopefully share it with others too yeah for sure so now um so do you have like a different type of job for an income uh, I have had many, several jobs. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, I've done some. I've done some commercial work. I've worked in the construction business uh, for a few years. Uh, I worked at a warehouse in Saint Laurent at the Sears uh, warehouse. <laughs> um, 
so yeah, it's but that's like most artists, that's kind of what you end up doing, which is which is great because in a way it it you I'm put into all kinds of circumstances. I worked for an insurance company in an office for a few years. Uh, I've done some teaching. I've taught photography courses and things like that. So it's been a mixed bag for sure. Uh, and I wouldn't recommend it for anyone who wants a very steady, uh, wonderfully secure income. <laughs> it's not about security. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand that, right? right. It's, it's just like, I mean, I, I do things like knit and crochet and it's for the satisfaction of right. your, yeah. own, your own work. I think that's very important for everyone. You, you know, I mean, I've worked with people that have had the same job for 40 years and boy, I just, I, you know, I, I appreciate that it's uh, maybe works for them, but I, I can't imagine it working for me. I'm, I'm just I'm too restless too. <laughs> uh, one of the things that I, I think a lot of um, uh, artistic people have told me that um, if you have a talent and you don't use it, there's this, Hmm. this um, um, something missing. Yes, absolutely. And, and there have been times when I've had jobs that have really taken away most of my time from like con construction, for example. I mean, I really didn't have a lot of extra time and energy left over after a workday on, on a job site. Uh, but I did find on the job site, one of the things I did was uh, surveying. Um, and so I'd use one of these instruments that you look, you yeah. line up but and, and that became in a way my artistic practice because uh similar to using a camera and <laughs> focusing it an image but i remember getting distracted for example instead of looking at the guy holding the rod you know <laughs> I'd, I'd noticed the color of the mountains behind him and it's beautiful <laughs> i could have maybe i could use that in a painting <laughs> Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I love that. Yeah, bring yourself in from that, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I can under, I can almost understand it. You know, it make it makes sense to me that that you would be distracted by that, right? Yeah, well, I, I think that applies to everyone, and I, I think it's 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 wonderful if you have the opportunity to look for for, for everyone, whether you're an artist or not, uh, for that individual insight that I think everybody has. Yes, for sure. Well, I just, I really appreciate you taking the time to do this with me. And I, once again, I apologize for not suggesting you have some of your artwork, but I will make sure that your website is um, put okay. in there. Okay. And um, I'll, I'll let you, well, I'll let you know when this airs, but first I'm going to just say goodbye to the audience. All right. Okay. So just hold on. All right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you, everybody, for uh, watching the show. And I, I hope you check out Dave Evan, David Evans' work when I'm going to put it up there for you to see. Um, and it, it just, uh, just for the sheer appreciation of what he does. I, I just love it. And thank you for watching the show. Hope you see you again. Peace out, everyone. A sense of community to the wax of place to be. A sense of community where you're free Rolling through the mountains Rolling through the valley Rolling through paradise with me It's multicultural You're sure to see it all Chilliwack's the place to be, you'll see Come party in the park Go dancing after dark, Chilliwack's a place to be, you'll see.